today we are going to take a look at the three interview questions. So let's start. First question is, how can you use printf statement without a semicolon in C? As we know that semicolon is a statement terminator. So writing any statement without a semicolon will cause an error. So this question that how can you use printf without semicolon is a bit tricky one. Well, the answer is you can just put the printf statement inside the if condition. Suppose here we write hash include stdio.h which is the header file then int main which is the main function the starting point of any C program. After that we write if statement and within the parent thesis we write printf hello world. This is valid because printf hello world is going to print hello world on the output screen. So if would be executed and since within the body of the if that is in the braces we have not passed anything so no statement will be executed and the printf statement will print hello world on the output screen. Next question. What are basic data types that are supported in C programming language? We all know that in C there are different types of data types that are being supported. Now let us look at some of the basic data types, their size and their range. So first is short. It occupies 1 byte of size. Now 1 byte is equal to 8 bits of data. This means short will occupy 8 bits of data. And it ranges from minus 128 to 127. Thus we can store signed values into it. That is both the negatives and the positives are possible to be stored in short data types. Similar to short is unsigned short which is having the same size as short but it will only store positive integers from 0 to 255. Next is char that is used to store character values whose size is also 1 byte and range is minus 128 to 127. The difference between short and char is that short is used to store integer values ranging from minus 128 to 127 while on the other hand char will be used to store the character values whose a sky can lie from minus 128 to 127. In the same way unsigned char which is also a 1 byte size will store values from 0 to 255 that is the ASCII values from 0 to 255. Next we have integer which will occupy a size of 2 bytes and its range will be from minus 32768 to positive 32767. It will be used to store integer values within this range. Similarly we have unsigned integer whose size is similar to that of the integer that is 2 bytes. It will also be used to store the integer values but since it is unsigned integer so its range will be from 0 to 65535. Next we have long. Long is nothing but an extension of integer. Integer is used to store a definite range of values but if we are using a long data type then in that case the range will be extended and we will be able to store large integer values in long. So the size of the long is also double the size of integer that is 4 bytes and its range is minus 2147483648 positive 2147483648. 7. In the same way we have another data type that is unsigned long which is nothing but an unsigned version of long having the same size as 4 bytes and its range is from 0 to 
295. The next data type that we have is float. That is used to store decimal values in it. Its size is 4 bytes and its range is from 3.4 E minus 38 to 3.4 E plus 38. That means that from 3.4 into 10 to the power minus 38 to 3.4 into 10 to the power positive 38 is what is the range of this float data type. Double in the same way is simply an extension for float. Its size is 8 bytes and its range is 1.7 E minus 308 to 1.7 E plus 308. In the same way we have another data type that is long double whose size is 10 bytes and it is used to store again the decimal values but to even a higher precision than double. Its range is from 3.4 E minus 4932 to 1.1 E plus 4932 that is to a very high level of precision. So these are the basic data types that are supported in the C programming language. Next question, how can you make an infinite loop in C? So what is an infinite loop? An infinite loop is one that keeps on executing up till the infinite number of possibilities. It never stops its execution. So here we are seeing an example that how can we make a for loop infinite loop in C? So to make a for loop an infinite loop, the omission of the condition statement because if there is no condition or if the condition is provided in such a way that it never evaluates to be false and is always true. So the loop will continue till infinite possibilities. So this is what we have done. We have taken a for loop and simply written its syntax without passing any initialization condition, without any condition and without any updation. And inside the body of the for loop we have written a printf statement in which we have printed infinite loop. So this message infinite loop will be printed infinite time on the computer screen. Next question, name the storage classes in C. So there are four storage classes in C. These classes are auto, register, static and extern. Next question, can a C program be compiled or executed in the absence of a main function? So, as we know that main is the starting point of every C program, the program will be compiled if there is no main function, but it will not be executed. To execute any C program, a main function is required as the control will not know from where to start the execution because main is the starting point of every C program. Next question, what is a C token? C tokens are the smallest building block or smallest unit of a C program. The compiler breaks a program into the smallest possible units which is called a token. Keywords, constants, special symbols, operators and identifiers used in a C program are referred to as C tokens. For example, if we take int a equals to 10 and then semicolon, it is a valid C statement. Here int is a keyword which is token number 1. A is an identifier which is a variable name so it is another token. Equals is the assignment operator which comes under the category of operators so it's another token. 10 
is an integer value which is constant. So, it is also a token and semicolon which is kind of a special symbol that is the statement terminator. So, it is also a token. So, in this statement, there are 5 C tokens which are the smallest unit and cannot be broken further. Next question, what is the main difference between the compiler and the interpreter? The answer is, first we look at compiler. It is used in C language. It translates the complete code into the machine code in one go. So whatever the source code is fed into the compiler, in one go it translates the whole source code into the machine code. The compilation process is faster. Next, interpreter. Interpreter is used in Java and other high level programming languages. It is designed to compile the code in a line by line fashion. The process is slower than compilation. So both compiler and interpreter are used to compile the source code into the machine code but the striking difference is that compiler translates whole code into one code. But the interpreter does the same process in a line by line fashion. Next question. Differentiate between getch and getche. The answer is both the functions are designed to read characters from the keyboard. But the main difference is for getch it reads the characters from the keyboard. But it does not use any buffers. Hence the data is not displayed on the screen. So whenever the getch function is being used, it reads the character from the keyboard. But since no buffer is used, so the data will not be displayed on the computer screen. Next is the getch function that reads the characters from the keyboard and along with that it uses a buffer to store those characters. So, the data that is being entered into the getch function will be displayed on the screen. Let us understand this with the help of an example. Here, first of all, we have declared a character type of variable. Then, there is a printf statement, please enter a character. So, this will be printed as it is on the output screen. On the right side, you can see the output as well. Please enter a character will be printed on the screen. Then there is a get ch statement. Since the get ch does not use a buffer, so whatever the character would be entered by the user will not be displayed on the screen. Instead, the next printf statement would be executed, which is your entered character is, and the value of ch will be printed. Suppose in this case, the user enters capital A. So, the message that would be printed on the output screen is your entered character is capital A. Next, there is another printf statement. Please enter another character. This time, get CHE is used to accept the input and since uses a memory buffer, so the character that is being entered by the user is displayed on the output screen. Here the user enters capital B and this capital B is printed on the output screen at the time of its entry. After this, the next printf statement, your new character is, is executed and the final output on the screen will be, your new character is capital B. So this is the difference between getch and getche in the C programming language. Next question is, how can we store a negative integer in C? So, to store a negative integer, the two's complement of that number is calculated first and then whatever the value is found, it is stored inside the variable. For example, if we want to store minus 5, then in that case, the binary value of minus 5 will be 1, 0, 1, 1. So we need to find 
the ones complement of five. The ones complement of five will be one zero one zero. After that, one will be added to the ones complement of five, giving one zero one one, which is nothing but the binary value of minus five. Next question. What do you mean by dangling pointer variable in C programming? So first of all we look that what is a pointer. A pointer in C programming is used to point to the memory location of an existing variable. If that particular variable is deleted but the pointer is still pointing to the same memory location then that particular pointer variable is known as a dangling pointer variable. So that's all.